we all make decisions every single day. From the time we open up our eyes, we decide whether we fix our bed or not, eat breakfast or take a bath first, and a lot more. And most of the time, we choose to stay in our comfort zone. But believe me, once in a while, we'll get tested. And that's where taking a leap of faith comes into the picture. Hi, my name is Jella and welcome to the Wise and the Curious Podcast, where the prudent meets the eager. Today, I've invited a very special guest that will share her incredible story about leap of faith. She's a registered psychometrician and a go-to person when it comes to advices. One of the realists I know. Let's all welcome Abigail Tiadasha. Hi, everyone. My name is Abigail, but Abby for short. That's what everyone calls me. And what I can tell about myself is that I like music. I like arts. I like um, doing things that most of the time I'm alone. (laughs) So I'm kind of introverted in nature, but I also like being with people and making wonderful connections with them so that's all that I can say but during this time I'm currently enjoying my life responsibly and I'm hoping that good love will find me good love meaning self-love familial love friendship or the romantic one so that's the current situation or status of my life just give you an idea Abby and I got to know each other when we were still in college. We're, we're not going to drop the name, but yeah, we entered the same university and we got closer because we're both officers, right? Correct. Student yeah, council. Yeah. We, Student both, organization. Yeah, exactly. I'm part of um, an entrepreneurship organization and she's part of the psychology organization. I met Angela when we are in office. So I'm like the senior one and they're the upcoming officers during that time. Actually, for me, Angela is really standout, a standout person because they are revolutionary. Not like me. I just (laughs) follow rules. (laughs) I know I just follow rules, but I maintain order and during that time, right? And to give you a background of my college life, actually, psychology is not my first choice. It yeah, was I was actually, actually about to ask that if that's your ah. first choice. <laughs> no, it was not. My first choice was business management, oh. then IT, and then psychology. I didn't see that coming, that you really wanted to study business management, IT, and the like. So can yes. you like give us more details of the choices that you've had before? And why did you end up you know, taking up psychology? Ah, uh, good question. So my other options during that time was also tourism, only because I was tall, <laughs> not <laughs> for any other reason. And then psychology, I took psychology during that time. My older, the eldest, my eldest brother is the only one who has job during that time. So I had to think. So I should I choose a costly course or the one I can manage? So during yeah. that time, psychology was the best choice for me because I know I can do something about it. Like I'm a resource, resourceful person and I could just um, think about how can I study? How can I get books while helping my brother with the expenses? And then uh, during that time, my goal was to really... Also graduate while helping my brother because he was the first person who has the job in the siblings. So aside from my father, he was next. And then the story was, um, I was actually nervous. I don't know if I will get the horse. But luckily, if you know Mom Janine, the famous yeah. professor of psychology there, she was the one who administered the test. And then she was the one who called me back as well and told me that I got into the course. So the rest was history. And I graduated. And then, but before I graduated, so let me insert that part yes. where I <laughs> met you, where we really spent time doing um, student organization things. So my history was first I... So this story, I really never told this story to anyone. So I got into student organizations because 
I wanted to do something different when mm. I was in college. Because in high school, I was really a quiet student. I just watched student council, the one that, yun yung tawag nun dati, di ba? Yeah. Um, just doing their thing there. And then, I just watch. Just an ordinary per- student, just observing. But during this college period, I just have this feeling na, sige, subukan mo, subukan mo. Then, I tried. And then, oh, Mr. Opigo and Ma'am Sheila interviewed me. I really did not campaign for anything else, but I won. Aww. I swear, I really won. I don't know what happened, but I won. The vice president came into our room announcing that, hey, Abby, you're the secretary of someone. Oh, it. it happened, you know, years ago. So it's valid that we forget things. <laughs> but yeah, but, but you know, um, I think the reason why you won the election is because people really see potentials in you. I mean, they won't vote for you if they didn't see anything that, you know, that they think is really essential for the organization. I really think that you've exhibited a lot of characters that really are meant for a secretary. Thank you for that, Angela. Yeah. Um, how about you? What was your experience during that time? The most unforgettable experience as a student organization president. Mm, you are the president. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I started yeah, when I was just president. fresh and young in college. <laughs> I led the organization as a whole. And there's a lot of um, unforgettable memories. First off, I got to know a lot of people like you mm-hmm. and Correct. all the officers right. that became our friends. There's a lot of Correct. learnings, values. There's a lot of, you know, okay. stories imparted to us that really inspired us to do more and be more. A lot of experience, but um, the most unforgettable one was it made me strong. It made me realize mm-hmm. that, you know, um, being the president, you really have to be mentally strong. For you to not just take care of yourself, but, but to also lead the people who are really um, rooting for you. Because you're not just there right, for the position. Right. You're there because you're, res- I mean, you're responsible and accountable for the welfare of the organization and mm-hmm. the people within the organization. Yeah, that's, that's actually Correct. it is. Well, I just want to ask, um, you've mentioned that psychology wasn't your first choice. So was mm. there some sort of influence or it was just the family situation? Actually, the main reason was the family situation. And then I just added that I was really curious yeah. with people <laughs> and how they interact because I see myself, I'm the only girl in the siblings. So And I'm the middle child. So what's left for me is to like uh, just you know, be out of that situation and observe because yeah. my my siblings are boys and sometimes I get awkward interacting with yeah, them. Yeah, because basically they do have I'm common different. they do have common denominators right. and you're the girl and you know sometimes mm. you get aloof and you can't relate to the things that they do. So yeah, I got it. Exactly. <laughs> so that's the main reason. And then to also understand my mother that time. During that mm-hmm. time she was actually depressed and then mm-hmm. later on diagnosed with bipolar. So that's mm-hmm. also the main, uh, one of the main reasons why I took psychology was to help my mother as well. Well, actually, it works uh, for me too. I mean, family really is the reason behind the decisions I make. So just like you, uh-huh. like you, know, you took up psychology because you really want to understand what's going through with your mother. How can you help her mm-hmm. cope up with the situation sure. and a lot more. So in my case, I do that as well. I really got motivated and inspired mm-hmm. because of my family as well. Really, family plays the... an essential part in the decision making. So, Correct. So it's yes. a great force that compels us to decide yeah, for exactly. ourselves and the future, right? When you actually graduated from college, what were you expecting? Hmm, during that time, I graduated 2015. So, reveal na to ng age. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated uh, 2015. So, my main focus that time was to get a job. Yeah. Because I need to help my family immediately. Yeah. Actually, I am not expecting that much. I was like... Aiming for the moon, <laughs> like 
kung sino mauna tumanggap sa akin, yun, kukunin ko na yun. And that, that's what happened. Because I really needed to have a job during that time. I kind of settled for less. Yeah. So, that first job I took was really me, like a first-timer in the real world. We actually do have our first-timer stories. So, I, I think it's valid. Like, we don't really aim for the best And mm. it's okay for us to settle for less at first because, you know, mm. we don't really have much knowledge when we graduated. So we don't really know what a corporate world could be, mm. what how harsh the world could be to us. Like, because, you know, when we were in college, all we do was study, you know, pass the exam, mm. answer the recitation mm. and those stuff. I agree with you that sometimes people really tend to settle for less, um, stay in their comfort zone because... I mean, who's mm. not scared to go in a place that you're not familiar with? You don't have anyone to rely on. So mm. I think that's a valid reason that you chose to, you know, settle for less. Um, can you give us a walkthrough of your career when you graduated from college? Um, what was the job that you've taken? Mm. Just a glimpse of the job that you've done. Uh, sure. I'd be happy to do that. So my first job was a uh, medical assistant. On a recruitment agency, what I really did was to assist our recruited persons mm-hmm. in doing their medical, their clinical, like scheduling them on work clinics. Do they go to for them to get fit to work? Because um, just a glimpse mm-hmm. in the process of uh, overseas recruitment, medical is really important because it includes the health of the employee. Yeah, so that's a vital part. So it. That's what I did on my first job. But no, my comparison that time was our task in, st- in student organization. So <laughs> I will admit that I, w- I was not really satisfied that what I'm doing. Because from doing everything mm-hmm. in the real world, you're tasked to do just one thing. That's the thing I realized. During my first job, I was just tasked to do one thing. Yeah. <laughs> in comparison to doing ev- any everything in college, so it was a hard adjustment for me that time because there was this unsettling feeling inside of me. Na, ah, what is talang ginagawa ko? <laughs> And my standard was what I'm doing in college. So ten months later, um, there was an opportunity opened. And then I grabbed it. When I passed my resignation letter to the head, they told me, we knew that you will not really stay in our company. So they let me go. Then my next job, my second job, was aligned on what I really wanted to do because you mentioned earlier that I'm a go-to person. So I really like to be that person to the students. So this is where I entered the academe. Hmm. I will not tell the name yeah. of the company. But I worked there as a guidance associate for the whole like students. Like I handled preschool, elementary, tough. senior high school. So and uh, I handled 300 students that time. So imagine. That's too imagine. much. So from doing one task, you're responsible to handle a lot of students. And not just to handle them, but also mm. be accountable to like monitor their manners. Is that is that what you're dealing with Correct. before? Correct. Yeah. It's a tough job. <laughs> but uh, thankfully, I have someone, the disciplinary officer. So we're the ones who really uh, monitor the behavior, the manners, and all of it. And then there's tons of paperwork. <laughs> That I thought I can handle that time because I was referencing to my previous quote unquote college experience as a secretary handling those things. But there's always a but. <laughs> but uh, sometimes you can just do so much, but not really for everyone. Yeah. So <laughs> hi. During that time, Gabby Angela, <laughs> I have so many. Who got yeah, that's, on my that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I'm I, sure. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to your story because workplace is not a perfect place for everyone. I mean, you do have a lot of stories, bad days, good days, 
So I think um, what you're um, sharing right now is actually relatable. Correct. One more thing. Uh, what I really struggled with was events. I really love events. You know that. Because yeah. part of my previous student organization experience is to handle events. So I really like doing it. However, in the real world, it's different. In yeah. school, you give the budget. The school will give it to you because it's your money. But there, you have to manage the money. As in the tight money. They will give you the budget. They will give you the budget and then that's it. That's all you can have. And if you exceed that, you create all by yourself. Just to give an idea of what Abby was talking about is when we were in college, when we when we want to do a, an event for the students, we actually submit a proposal. It will be you know, approved as well by the advisors that they have. And then it will be passed on to the management. And then the management will approve it or not based on the proposal. Yes. But that's <laughs> the part of the job. So I did what I did best. And thankfully, all of the events were a good one. And mm-hmm. some, all of the students learned something about that during that time. And then it was really a nice experience also that your students come to you and say, teacher, help me. Or say, teacher, thank you for helping me. I am now have this clear mindset about this concern and all. But of course, some things are not meant to be. So I needed to leave and transfer to another one. But this is a related one as well. So from this, that school, I got employed to another school again. But this time, this is an inclusive school. So an inclusive school means that you, you will deal with children with disability. You will wow. deal with them. And then what the school does is to like treat them as like the usual kids in school. For example, no, no really special treatment, just like the regular school, but they're there. Like yeah. we're teaching them how to function and also guiding them on how to function outside. It's actually mm-hmm. heartwarming when children with disability, you know, get their milestones and you're there. Um, this is one of my most fulfilling but most exhausting job. Because during that time, from handling everything, I was tasked to handle elementary students. And during that time, there were a lot of students that has disability that Mm -hmm. we need to deal with. But it's okay because it's a part of the job that I signed Mm -hmm. with. And then the real thing about that job is that the fulfillment comes when you see something has become different on that student or they grow on you like they become close to you but you need to also maintain your distance because I'm also the disciplinarian so (sighs) because children need discipline first before they need guidance order before guidance and then but some things happened and you know we really need to do something about it and again I had to leave because of some things that I don't have any control of. And that's where I got into my current company, which I really treat as a blessing. It's really a blessing. Thank you, Angela, for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to share my story. So here's my leap of faith story. So back then, so we are on the third job, right? Yeah. So I had to leave the company again. Because of some things I cannot control. So during that time, after the crying and all and doubting myself if I can do that again, what really happened was I really whew, I really prayed because I, I was jobless for three months. So I left my, that job on May and then June, July, August. So three months. So that's where the leap of faith story will rotate. So, I sent out the, all of the applications because I was the breadwinner. 
And during that time, my mother was relapsing mm-hmm. with her condition. So we need to have the expenses for her medication and all. But the employers don't respond. Like on the first month, I just submitted everything. HR guidance and then employee relations, then training. Those were the positions I I submitted my resume to. So because of what happened on my past job, it actually had like some trauma on me that when I did my first ever interview, the first company who responded, I had mild anxiety attacks before the interview. I was trembling and then mm-hmm. I don't I really don't know what to do because I might fail or I might say something that they won't like and then I won't have the job, you know, the security. Yeah. No security that time because I left the company and then here I am. I am looking for another job again. So, you know, where the anxiety was coming from. Mm-hmm. And then after that, some employees or company that I submitted my resume to responded already. And then my current job was not really my first choice again. <laughs> it was really my last because oh. the type of the job I will tell you I will not I was not an advocate of the job I'm doing because I was a part of the community that oh nag English lang naman yun eh ganyan ganyan eh parang yeah. andali lang naman ng trabaho na yan eh ganyan so wala siya sa isip ko so parang pasa-pasa sa job street and then I saw the name of that company that I am in then HR associate or generalist That's where I submitted my application and then when I saw another post from them then that's the position tapos kinli ko lang tapos wala talaga akong paki kasi wala lang paki as in wala talaga para oh, sige sige na nga. kasi parang ang moto ko that time more ano parang lotto <laughs> or more, ano more, more entries more chances of winning chances of winning yes correct and then uh, after the second month like Uh, last two weeks of June, yun na. Tumawag na yung mga like, interviews, scheduled for interview, blah, 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 and all. Then, the last um, last job that I, ano, the last uh, interview I went to was a position for HR generalist. And then, the interview ended at like 6.30. Mm-hmm. And then, during that time, there's a call from my company. Like, hello, is this Abby? Ganyan, ganyan. Can we invite you for an interview at this time? Blah, blah, blah. And then, sige po, ganyan. Sabi ko, sige po, pupunta ako. So, fast forward to that. But before I I continue pala, balik ulit tayo sa interview. So, there was an interview with the job that I really liked. The position was, like, you're being the guidance of the employee. Mm-hmm. Di ba? So, wow, sobrang ganda. Ganyan, yan. I was, uh, I passed the initial interview and then I was speaking with the supervisor na, parang hiring manager na. But after that, I was not accepted. And then I was thinking, why? Lord, why? I have the qualifications. I have the license and all. I have the experience. Why didn't they choose me? And then to my frustration, I actually emailed the HR who, you know, oh. who contacted me. Like, This is actually so surprising. <laughs> actually, that that's how I really wanted that job badly because I know that I will not get any opportunity like that. So <laughs> embarrassing. But uh, the content of the email is like, I mean, I know, like, can you give me second chance? Because I know I can do this position, blah, 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 and all. But there was no answer. So again, this uh, like this courage heart of mine <laughs> was still pursuing, like hoping that they will reply. And then that's the interview that I told you. But during that time, I was in BGC as well. So I'm a type of person that when I don't know the place, I roam around. Yeah. For for future purposes. So during that time, I was walking Bonifacio High Street. 
I was heading towards uptown. And then, when I passed that street, that is yung talagang bubunga doon, I saw the company! And then I said, oh! I, re- I-, I was gasping like, oh, wow, Lord, ang ganda naman dyan. This is why my exact words. Because, wow, Lord, ang ganda naman dyan. Gusto ko po magtrabaho dyan. Parang gusto ko po magtrabaho dyan. Tapos, I was marveling at the building. It was beautiful. It was like a hotel. Well, actually, it was, yes, it's indeed beautiful. It was like, you know, like a mindless whisper. That, Lord, gusto kong magtrabaho dyan. But that time, I was not confident in myself. Mm-hmm. Ko, it's so big. Parang, ang laking company nito. Makakapasok ba ako dyan? Parang taga, taga imus lang ako, ganyan. <laughs> Tapos makapasok ako dyan. So, that thought went away easily. And then I walked away and then attended other interviews. So, coming back to the HR generalist interview. And then they called me. They called me. <laughs> Hello? They asked for my information and all. And when I was available to for the interview, so I said, yes, uh, sure. Because during that time, I was also like... I had nowhere to go na. That was the last interview for the job that I like. So this is the last interview. <laughs> and this was a job that I really did not think of doing, but they called me. So who am I to reject it? So I gave it a chance. And then the interview happened. So do you have anything before I continue? I don't know if it's just me, but whenever things don't go the way I planned it, I just mm. think of it this way. Maybe there's there's actually a redirection. Maybe there's a reason behind. Maybe it's not really for me or if I um, do that job, I won't perform that well. So that's the reason why I didn't get it in the first place. So yeah, you can continue now with your sure. story. But that realization came after. So I did the interview. Of course, it was the company that I was so fascinated with. So I walked <laughs> in the lobby and then... I was like looking at the ceiling and then, wow, parang hotel. Wow, ang laki. I, no filter na to, ang laki ng TV. Tapos, wow, ang social. That was the thought that I'm thinking. Because I cannot speak out loud, people will think I'm crazy. <laughs> so it was all in. The first time I stepped into BGC, I was really like amazed. Like, wow. Mm. Meron ba talagang ganito palang place ah? Sa... <laughs> Di ba? I don't... I don't know. Sometimes I really think that I'm not in the Philippines whenever I'm in I'm in BGC. <laughs> so, yeah, this is feel. It's like a concrete jungle where dreams are made of. Bye, yes, that's New York. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so to continue my story, the interview was really smooth. Wow. Of all the interviews I did... This was my calmest. So mm. I was like really prepared for that. I don't know. Or it was maybe Lord who put that calmness in me because I was not stuttering. Because this will, uh, they will like test your explaining skills because that's, that's your job. So yeah. I was not stuttering. I was smiling. I was feeling good during that time. And then I was, I had this um, feeling that I will pass even, even the test because I really diligently answered everything. And luckily, it happened. So, but, but there's another redirection. So, I was put in another training. So the company had the program called Near Hire Training. So those are for the people who had the potential but does not have the like the score. So may potential ako sa kanila pero yung score ko daw parang mababa. So they need parang this person has a potential. So let's put her here to increase the score and the potential and mm-hmm. that's what happened and then during that time i was revived from those jobs that i experienced like i was really depressed and don't know what to do and then i was feeling down this was really the opposite it's what it was like a revival i was excited for my life again and then <laughs> i was dreaming again because if you don't know me pala, 
I'm used to like, I'm a responsible person and I'm a dreamer. But when it comes to choosing my responsibility or my dreams, I'll go with the responsibility because so many people is depending on it. So I can let go of my dream and be responsible. So that's me in a nutshell. So for this period also, what I'm thinking also, the responsibility because I was also that time a breadwinner. But all of us are a breadwinner. But those were my deciding point. So back to the training, we were really enjoying the time, learning, and enhancing our skills. And you know what? Those people there, the trainer and the recruit recruitment coordinator, they will come up to me and then they will tell me, oh, you got the potential. Or, Ang galing-galing mo. Ganyan-ganyan. Tapos, me, ah, talaga po ba? <laughs> Oo, oh, ganun talaga ako, Angela promise. Ay, talaga po ba? Tapos, they will convince me that I can do the job. And then, nang nag-interview na ulit for the final interview. So, this training has the final interview. All of my failures, flashback. Like, of course, on our jobs, we have our wins and losses. But during that time, like, my past was holding me back. Like, I remembered everything that I did wrong and I started to cry. Like, what if those things happened again? What if I don't I don't pass this? So before the interview, I cried. I cried and they had to call me and then return. Because I know what I'm di mo kayang ipagpalit yung bigat ng ipagpapalit mo kung magfe-fail ka na naman dito. Mm-hmm. So, yun yung nagpaiyak sa akin during that time. But God was really good. He was there for me to comfort me. And then, fast forward, I passed. I signed the contract. And then, mm-hmm. na, two years after, I'm still here. And I'm dreaming again. That's what really, you know, revived me. I have dreams. God mm-hmm. redirected me to this place because... He had so much in store for me. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, grab it. Okay. <laughs> I think, um, Abby, um, since your well, the story of your leap of faith really comes to you know accepting the job offer of a job mm-hmm. that you're not really aware of, because basically you don't have any idea of what to do being a call setter agent, or you know. Mm-hmm. handling Correct. calls, talking to people, uh, making conversations with them, and also given that you're an introvert. So <laughs> I think, you know, jumping into the unknown, you know, mm. making yourself what they call this mentally strong to handle the, the uncertainties, the unfamiliarities, and coping with Correct. the changes. I think that's where the leap of faith comes really into the picture of your story. Along the way, since um since you're really not familiar with the job, um, can you like share us some of the struggles that you've had or still having with a job? And how, what are you actually doing to overcome these um struggles? Because thank you for that question. For the struggles, I during my first time, I was really struggling how to deal with difficult customers. I know. That was my struggle. I really cried. I cried. After How do you call it there? Time. The aggressive customer irate? Is that irate? Is irate. Yeah. Irate customer. I experienced my first irate customer after we graduated the training. I managed to end the call. But after that, I was really demotivated. Like, I was not talking to anyone that time. Mm-hmm. But I continued on because my manager did not know that I handled an irate customer. You know, to the listeners, this might be like, ah, it's so simple. No, it's my thinking also. <laughs> but when you're there, it's really difficult because your job is to give service and to please them. And also give the company a good impression to that customer. But what if something happened along the way and then you don't know what to do? How will you do that? So I was that on I was on that situation that time. But that's my first time. So I cried. And then uh, as time goes by, of course, I need to know how to deal with them. But since I have background with psychology, 
um, what I did was to really establish rapport during that time and also study the material because everything is presented to you at the screen. You really just need to be keen to details so that your card member won't pick you when you give wrong information. And then I also talked with my manager. It's like really, she's help, she helped me on how to do the scripting and what to do when you experience that again. But now, the improvement is really good. I can handle them and actually turn that call into a good one. So, well, it's that's impressive. For me. <laughs> well, I actually do know a lot of call center agents and I am really amazed with how they handle their day-to-day job. Because, you know, every call is different. Every person mm, you talk to is different. Correct. They have different behaviors. Right. They talk to you in a different manner. So you really have to adjust. And they do have several requests as well. So their requests mm. vary from one call to another. So one time someone is checking their account. The other one is, why am I being debited or what have you? So for those call center agents, I'm proud of you. And I'm, I really know that you're doing your job really great. And for those who are actually thinking that the job is really, really easy, I think <laughs> really have to experience it firsthand. Because yeah, just to share you as well, well, I'm not really a call center agent during the time, but I perform calls in all states of mm-hmm. America to request for some mm-hmm. you know, information. So I got to talk to a lot of people, lawyers, mm-hmm. title, title agents, and a lot more. So it's actually, um, what do you call this? It's tough. Because sometimes, especially those attorneys, you might think that they're shouting at you or they're Mm. really rushing things. So, yeah, being a call center agent or, you know, handling calls is really, really tough. Abby, I just want to know, do you have any regrets taking the leap of faith? No. Because, you, you know, people should realize that when you take a leap of faith, it's not going to be successful as always. I mean, sometimes I'm going to take a leap of faith and things won't go according to my plan. It's going to be a success or a lesson. So for me, if you mm. fail, you're going to get some lessons. So the next time you encounter the same situation, you already know how to deal with it. Not a guarantee of success, but it's a guarantee of lesson. The reason why I'm asking if you do have regrets is because for people to see that it's not um, a smooth sail or a smooth uh, journey for someone mm. who has taken the leap of faith. For me, like looking back, Angela, no. I did not regret it because um, as what a part of my prayer during finding this job was, Lord, kayo lang po yung nag-open ng doors at nag-close. So, if you open this for me, I will willingly take it. Hmm. And this is the door that he opened for me. Ah, ko. Um, you, you will know that the, that the decision you made is correct when you have peace. When yeah. you experience peace. And that's what I experienced on the first time during the interview and all and during this one. And plus, I really enjoyed the process. I was able to meet Gen Z's actually. They're good people. And I really felt like, oh, I'm young again. You know? <laughs> so I kept on telling that I was excited for my life again. Because the leap of faith, faith that I took was really for me. It was really God's door opening for me because He knows. He knows the future, right? Yeah. But what I know is just where I am. So, God knew that if He closed the door, like the interviews that I went to and all and opened this door, I would know that this was the one for me because this is the one that I prayed. You know what? After signing the contract, the jobs that I applied replied. <laughs> and I tell that I told them it was too late. I already got the job. And looking back, there was no regrets because again, it was God who opened this door for me. And when God opens a door, it's always a blessing. Hmm, that's really inspiring. I think it would help if you would give something that would really mark. <laughs> Actually, I was reading this book. I just started two weeks ago. It was entitled God's Will and Decision Making. Mm-hmm. So all of us are adults here. So all of us, the adults are actually 
experiencing decision making every day for yourself, for other people, for your for your job, for your family. So I will quote a part of that book. This is let me just quote the author. So this is Decision Making in the Will of God by Gary Friesen. So this is the part. <laughs> so <laughs> so finding God's will, the leap of faith brings peace and a blessing to the person. So the right results in a decision can give you certainty by confirming that your choice was correct. You may have felt confident that you were on the right road all along, but when you arrive at your destination, there is a additional certainty with this obvious confirmation. So results are like the sign at the park, which is reunion picnic, you made it, and you were pretty sure you had accurately followed the arrows painted on the paper plates tacked to the telephone post, but the final sign clenched it. So the thing to note, however, is that your faith will always be tested. So yeah. do not be discouraged or intimidated by difficulties you may initially encounter. They do not necessarily mean that you have missed God's plan for you. So during this time, so it relate to lang sa story ko na, Minsan inisip ko na, Lord, dito ba yung for me? Yeah. Should I really take this? Especially but, when you're experiencing bad days, right? Correct. Sometimes you question the decisions you've made in the past or you're currently mm-hmm. made. <laughs> like, correct. is this really the good one for me? Because I don't feel like it is. Because, you know, I'm mm-hmm. really down right now. Uh, why am I mm-hmm. feeling this way? So, yeah. So, just take that leap of faith and you will get the results that you have. But, You need to also stay strong and don't let the bad days get into you. Just be steadfast during those situations where your faith is being tested. Thanks, Abby, for joining this um, session. I'm pretty sure that all the listeners will really get a lot of learnings from your story of Live of Faith. Thank you. And <laughs> they will really get inspired with the way you handle things. And how you really weigh things in terms of your dreams, your family, your responsibilities, and a lot more. So just to close this session, I would say that please don't be afraid to take a leap of faith. Because at the end of the day, we get learnings out of it. 